Hello folks, Phantom Sawai here, and today we are starting up the Fate Stay Night Let's Play. Uh, overwhelmingly, Heaven's Feel won the votes that I put out, uh, asked you guys to get me uh, for what route we should play, and so that's what we'll be doing. I've already completed the Fate and uh, Unlimited Blade Works routes uh, in preparation for this, and let's hop right into it, shall we? I'm pretty excited. It's been a long time since I played Fate Stay Night. Um, I did have a bit of a false start with this Let's Play because I had some technical issues and derped out on that. But this time I think we're going to get it going for real. I'm the bone of my sword, steel is my body, and fire is my blood. I've created over a thousand blades, unknown to death nor known to life. Have withstood pain to create many weapons, yet those hands will never hold anything. So as I pray, unlimited blade works. When I came to, I was in a burning field. I guess there was a big fire. The familiar town had turned to ashes, and it looked like the remains of a battlefield from a movie. But that didn't last long either. The fire had died down by the time the sun rose. The town wall of flame had shortened, or the tall wall of flame had shortened, and most of the buildings had fallen. It felt strange being the only thing in that place that still had its original form. I was the only one still alive around here. I must have been really lucky, or my house was built in a very lucky spot. I don't know which it was, but the point is, I was the only one left alive. I felt that since I survived, I should live on. I started walking aimlessly, because I thought it would be dangerous just to, say, to stay there. I wasn't really concerned about getting burned up like the people lying around me. Probably because over and above not wanting to be like them, I had a stronger feeling in my mind. But still, I had no hope. It was already a wonder that I was alive, so I couldn't expect to be saved. I won't survive. Whatever happens, I won't be able to escape from this red world. It was such an absolute hell that even a small child could understand it. I collapsed. Was it because there was no air? Was it because no function was left in my body? Anyway, I collapsed and stared up at the clouded sky. Everything around me was burned up, and I could see many shriveled people. The dark clouds loomed overhead, telling me that it would rain soon. <sighs> That's good. The fire will be put out once it rains. In the end, I sighed deeply and looked up at the sky. I say to myself that it hurts. I say so on behalf of all the people who couldn't even say so. That was ten years ago. After that, I was miraculously saved. My body survived. But I think all the other things about me burned up and were reduced to ashes. If you take away a child's parents, home, and all such things, there's nothing left for him. That's why there was only my body. I think it's a simple story. In other words, in order to let my body live, my heart died. I'm dreaming. <laughs> I squint my eyes at the white light. So bright, I think. It was just light entering my eyes when I woke up, but I'm not used to it. I probably didn't even understand what bright light meant. When my eyes focus, I'm surprised. I'm lying on an unfamiliar bed, in an unfamiliar room. I'm surprised, but the room is so white and clean that I feel safe. I look around. The room is big, and there are many beds. A person is in each bed, and everyone seems to be hurt. But nothing feels, feels ill in this room. Everyone who's hurt is someone who was saved. I relax, and let my eyes wander. Outside the window, the bright blue sky was so unbelievably beautiful.
After a few days, I finally understood. I could clearly remember what had happened in the past few days. Even so, I was no different from a newborn baby. Not just a metaphor, it was close to the truth. Anyway, it was a terrible fire. I had been saved from it, was in the hospital with my body wrapped in bandages, and my parents were gone. I didn't get the situation, but I vaguely understood that I was alone. I think I understood quickly. Well, there was nothing but children in similar situations around me, so all I could do was absorb that fact. And after that, that man came, right when I was beginning to wonder, uh, to worry what would happen to me next. He came on the day my bandages were taking, uh, taken off, and I was able to eat without help. Wrinkled coat and uncombed hair. The man, a bit younger than the doctor, felt more like a big brother than a father. A smile that seems to melt into the white sunlight. I think it was a suspicious voice, but a very kind voice. That man was saying that he could adopt me. When I asked him if he was a relative of mine, he said he was just a stranger. He looked like an unreliable guy with no future. But it made no difference, as I knew nothing about either one, him or the orphanage. So I decided to go with him. The guy quickly started packing my stuff. His packing wasn't very good, even in the eyes of a child. Then, after making a big mess... Is that okay? He turns to me lightheartedly and says, He says it in a serious, exaggerated tone. It happened in an instant. Come to think of it now, I was really a child back then. I automatically believed those words. I guess I said so with bright eyes. Since that time, I became his child. Actually, I don't remember what I said back then. But my father would always talk about that day. He would remember and retell the story again and again. So for my father, Emiya Kiritsugu, that might have been the happiest day of his life. So, I guess it was strange for my father to tell me that he was a sorcerer. But I was strange as well for admiring that. And thus, I became an adopted son, and my last name became Emiya. Emiya Shiro. When I said my name, I was really proud of having that same last name as Kiritsugu. I'm dreaming. A story from my childhood. It was when I finally convinced my father to make me a student, so it must have been about eight years ago. When I was old enough to stay at home by myself, Kiritsugu wanted to leave the house on a, or started to leave the house on a regular basis. He would say in his normal tone that he would travel the world and began to act on these words. That's how it was after that. It was normal for him to leave the house empty for a month, and sometimes he wouldn't come home for half a year. The Emiya house is a big Japanese-style house, and Kiritsugu and I were the only ones living there. I was perplexed in this house, house at times, as it was too big for a child. But still, I liked my life here. Emiya Kiritsugu would come home from his journeys and tell me lots of stories, like a child. And the child, who shared his last name, would be at home, waiting for those stories. I was always alone in that house, but that lonely uh that uh, but that loneliness would all fade with the stories he brought back. The father who was always chasing his dreams like a kid. His attitude was astounding, but he always seemed dazzling to me. That might be why I wanted to be like him someday. Well, on top of that, looking at my ever dreaming father, 
I felt that I should become reliable myself. January 31st, Fate's Day Night. One day. I hear a sound. I hear a heavy old rusty sound as the door opens. Light enters the dark shed. <clears throat> My mind waking up. Senpai, feels the cold air and the approaching footsteps. Sakura smiles and nods as if accustomed to the situation. Sakura seems more upbeat than usual today, if she's ha as if she's happy about something. I answer her with a sleepy head. I don't know what I'm saying with my mind not fully awake. Sakura is giggling. I guess my head was still dozing, and I had I said something weird. <sighs> Taking a deep breath, I clear up my mind. The cold outdoor air helps in situations like this. The chill works well to beat the sleepiness out of my head. In front of me is Mato Sakura, my junior at school. This place is a shed behind my house, and the time is 6 o'clock. Sakura says so in a happy tone. It's unusual. Sakura really seems to be in a good mood this morning. That said, I looked down at myself. I fell asleep while working, so I'm still wearing my overalls. Being my work clothes, they're pretty dirty. I can't imagine what Fujine would say to me if I went to the house like this. まだ目が覚めてないみたいだ。なんか普段に増して抜けてるな、俺。え、そうかもしれませんね。ですから、朝食の支度は私に任せて、先輩はもう少しゆっくりしていてください。それにほら、ここを散らかしっぱなしにし
but I always sneaked in here. As a result, it became my base. For me, Emiyashiro, I guess you could call this place my real room. The big Emiya household doesn't suit me, and I can only relax in this space full of junk. <laughs> Most of the things in here are appliances that can't be used anymore. Did I bring all the junk in here because I like the place? Or did I come to like it here because of all the junk? Anyway, since I was always sneaking in here, it became my hobby to fix the broken things. It's not like I get attached to things. I think it just annoys me not to use things that can still be used. And just like that, I was fixing up this stove all last night. <laughs> I shake off the feeling of disappointment in myself. I gather up the parts of the stove and put them on the shelf full of things waiting to be fixed. There are no spaces on this shelf full of things awaiting repair. An old VCR awaits after the stove. I guess I'll ignore the fact that Fujine broke both of them. I change into my uniform. This place is like my room, and it holds changes of clothes along with other things that I need. It also has lots of blueprints and junk, the results of failures from when I do my training. There's also some kind of old design inscribed into the floor, like an altar or something. <laughs> Clapping my hands in prayer to the shed, I head for the house. I emerge from the shed. The Emiya house is a Japanese-style house on the outskirts of town. My father wasn't much of a respected person in town, but he somehow had this huge house. That on its own is a mystery, but it also seems that he didn't have any relatives in Japan. That's why the house became mine and no one else's when my father died. Though, to be honest, I don't have that kind of management ability. Old man Fujimura is in, cha in charge of complicated things like inheritance and property taxes. Old man Fujimura is the big landlord in this neighborhood. According to father, the old man's like a Yakuza boss. Of course, this is just prejudice. He's not like a Yakuza boss. He is a Yakuza boss. Well, that's a problem in itself, but I prefer to ignore it. It's certainly true that he's eccentric, or energetic and scary, but he's actually not that bad a person. It really helps me, as he pays a lot when I tune up his motorcycle that he likes to ride. Anyway, that's why I'm the only one living in this big house. It's been five years since father died. The days have passed quickly. I sigh, thinking about how much I've grown in these past five years. I've trained every day to be like Kiritsugu, but it's not that easy in reality. It's natural, because I had no talent to begin with, but what can be said about having no improvement at all in five years? To sum up the present in one sentence, my goal is so far away that I'm not even at the starting line yet. No, I guess it won't do to, uh, it won't do any good to rush. For now, I have to do what I can. Well then, right now I should... I'll go and help Sakura, or I'll go finish my daily routine. I'll go and help Sakura. That's right, I have to go and help Sakura. I'd feel bad, both for letting my junior do all the work, and for Sakura coming here so early in the morning. But I'm too late. It seems breakfast has already been made. I can smell the elegant, uh, smell the elegant scent of breakfast befitting Sakura. Sakura has finished cooking and is opening the cupboards. I can see that he, uh, she, <laughs> I can see that all she has left to do is set the table. そんなことはないと思いますよ。先輩は部活をしていないんですから、この時間は十分に早起きです。部活は関係ない。それを言ったら朝練のあるさくらがうちに来てくれるのも問題じゃないか。いえ、私は好きです。
していることですから部活のことは気にしないでくださいああそれは何度も聞いただから俺も部活に関係なく早起きしてるんださくらが来てくれるならその時間には起きてないと失礼だろ For me, waking up, waking up early is waking up before Sakura gets here, and sleeping in is making Sakura prepare breakfast on her own, like today. Though this has only been a habit for a year and a half or so. I stand next to Sakura and take out the dishes. Sakura is stubborn at times, and in situations like this, she won't、uh, let she won't rest unless she's forced to. さくら一人に働かせてのんびりしている主人なんてやぬし失格だぞいいからさくらは今に言ってろってはいぜひ失格してくださいこれいつも美味しいご飯を食べさせてもらっているお返しなんですだからできれば先輩にはゆっくりし
Frankly, Sakura is beautiful. She's one of the best looking first years, and I'm sure there are lots of guys who want to date her. On top of that, she's been growing in certain places recently, and some of her casual gestures have started to catch my eye. That's what I mean by small problem. Maybe I'm just feeling guilty about being attracted to my friend's sister. Usually I'm fine, but when I'm caught off guard like this, now, uh, like just now, I blush. Does this make me an unsuitable senpai? Breakfast is placed on the table. A perfect breakfast consisting of chicken salad, cooked salmon, spinach, radish, and carrot miso soup, and yam soup. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Sakura and I bow and start our meal quietly. The sounds of our chopsticks e echo. Sakura isn't the talkative type, and I'm not very ver I'm not versatile enough to talk while eating. Naturally, meal times are quiet. Usually it's louder, but today the loud person is. She must have been watching spy movies last night, as she's eyeing us while hiding behind a newspaper. Fujine ignores Sakura's question. She's acting weird, but Fujine always acts in suspicious ways during breakfast. Sakura must be used to it, as she continues to eat with no particular care. Sakura prefers to make Western foods. She learned to cook Japanese foods after she started coming here to help. Fujine and I prefer Japanese, so Sakura learned to make Japanese food uh, for our breakfast. Now she's so good that she's almost surpassed me, her teacher. The salmon is especially good, as it's cooked to perfection. Her miso soup is tasty, and she's shown me some capacity even for making yam soup by grinding yams. Actually, I think this is the first time she's made it. Fujine nods. Her newspaper trembles. Naturally, I have no idea. I put the soy sauce onto the white yam soup. After stirring it, I put it on the rice and take a bite. Mmm, the stickiness of the yam and the taste of the soy sauce. <laughs> I almost throw it back up. And then... <laughs> Fujine throws her newspaper away. Female spy throws up her hands to show her happiness. あ、さっぱらから何考えてんだあんたは。今年で25の癖にいつまで経っても不死ねは不死ねだな。ふふんだ。昨日の恨み思い知ってか。みんなと一緒になってお姉ちゃんをいじめるやつには当然の天罰
食べ物に細工するなんて藤村先生にしてはやりすぎですからんいやそれがさ昨日つい頭で呼んじまったそれじゃあ仕方ありませんね先輩藤村先生に謝らなかったんでしょう面目ないいつものことなんで忘れてたダメですよ藤村先生先輩にあだ名を言われるのだけは嫌がるんですからまた泣かせちゃったんでしょう泣かした上にダットのことか走り去らせたおかげで昨日の英語は自習だったもう、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、She started to show up more, even more after father died, and now she's almost a dependent, eating breakfast and dinner here. No. And maybe she's why I was able to make it on my own, even after father died. Fujine, Sakura, and I are now the residents of the Emiya household. But I'm the only one who knows that my father was a Magus. It's said that Magi must hide their identities. That's why I've been hiding the fact that I'm learning magic ever since I became my father's student. I say I'm learning, but I can't even cast a single magic spell properly. With this kind of skill, it wouldn't make much difference whether I hide it, I hide it or not. But because, of,、uh, but because it was how my father wanted things, I've trained secretly since then. I finish breakfast and prepare for school. I clean the dishes with Sakura while listening to the news on TV. Sakura is staring at the TV screen. Anyone who's played Tsukihime might recognize the very subtle background music right now. It's、uh, sort of the foreboding theme from that game, which was、uh, Tight Moon's first visual novel. Over the screen runs an exaggerated teletype reading, g a s l e a k Accidents Continue. It seems there was a big accident in the neighboring town of Shinto. It happened in a building in the business, di business district. It seems a whole floor of people ran out of oxygen and fell unconscious. They've called it a gas leak, but this kind of accident is happening often recently. してるけど別にそんな大きな店じゃないよ今のニュースみたいな事故は起きないと思う But it's not a risk I can completely ignore Gas leaks can happen in any building and on top of that it hurts to think that hundreds of people are suffering It's said that the,、uh, the accidents are happening often because of defective construction work during the rapid development of Shinto Whether that's true or not I certainly don't want any more victims. Sakura boasts with pride. Yeah, I've thought so before, but Sakura is a bit off too. Ouch, Emiya kun. Senpai, Udate no Tojimari was s h i m a s t a Stayo, Kanuki Kakatakado, Munda Arka. Adimase, Sereja Kagi, Kakemasne. Senpai, Jono Kairi wa Nans deska? Scosho Sokonato, Sagrava. Natasha, it's Motori des. We lock the gate. Sakura and Fujine also have keys to my house, 
and the rule is that the, that the last person out locks up. We walk to town together. Passing the long wall and going downhill, we reach the residential district. My house is on top of the hill, far away from the center of town. Going down the hill takes us to the residential district, and beyond that... We reach the crossroads at the center of this town. From here, there are many roads, a big bridge leading to the neighboring city, a hill road that leads to Ryudo Temple, the residential district on the other side of town, the shopping district Sakura and I always use, and the school we're headed to right now. We head for the school without stopping elsewhere. We don't talk much as we walk up the hill. Since it's still 7 o'clock, there aren't many others on the road. Other than us, all you can see are a few others heading to their morning practices. I part with Sakura at the school gate like usual. Sakura's in the archery club, so we have to party it there in the mornings. But today, Sakura doesn't go. Sakura bows. Hmm. Sakura runs off like she's ashamed of something. Hmm? I wonder what that was all about. Uh, Shiro. He must have been studying, as Issei looks up from the paper that he's reading. Issei早出と残業は支度ないのだそうだ。それで生徒会長自らが雑用か。ここはここで大変そうだな。何好きでしているクロだ。エミアに同情してもらうのは筋が違う。うん。あや、一斉に同情なんてしてないぞ。うん。それは
いつもの道具を持ってついてきてくれ率直に言うとなうちの学校金のバランスが極端なんだよ知ってる運動系がひいきされてるもんで他に予算がいかないんだろううん結果文化系の部員は絶えず不遇の扱いでな今年から文化系に予算がいくよう尽力しているのだが予算の流れが不鮮明でうまく回っていないお特に冬のストーブ不足に関しては打開策がまるでないそうかあマイナスドライバーくれ一番大きいやつなあとどうせもいや、yeah, I should be able to fix this どうせんえっとこれかすまんよくわからん間違っていたら叱ってくれ当たってるからいいよんでストーブ不足がどうしたってここ以外にも故障してんのがあるのかある第二小学室と美術部の暖房器具が怪しいそうだ新品購入願いの嘆願書が刻一刻と増えているけど予算にそんな余裕はないとやっぱり劣化してるだけだな中がいかれてなくて助かったうん治りそうかエミア治るよこういう時古いやつは分かりやすくていい配線系のショートだから新しいのに変えればとりあえず今年いっぱいは頑張ってくれるそうかやるなエミアお前が頼りになると極めて嬉しいぞおかしな日本語使うね伊勢もう少しで済むからちょっと外に出ててくれうんエミアの邪魔はせん伊勢 leaves the room quietly Seems he assumes that I'm going to do something delicate. Yeah, delicate to yeba, delicate on the kettle. I place my hand on the old electric heater. Usually, even if you're used to fixing things, it's hard to figure out what's wrong just by looking at it. So the fact that I figured it out、uh, means that what I'm doing is not ordinary. I block off my vision and look inside the heater with my sense of touch. In that moment, An image appears in my head. Then it's in a dancing shikakater no after store. Then it's come a mother mozna. Then in cold on a hoa, that sent tape and unto a nare. Good. I can fix this with the tools I have on me. If the pipe were broken, it couldn't be fixed by an amateur. If that had been the case, I would have had to strengthen it in a very unamateurish way. But in this case, just looking at it will suffice. That is the magic Emiya Shiro learned from Kiritsugu. I take off the cover and start to work. I already know where it's broken, so the rest is easy. That's right. Emiya Shiro has no talent for magic. Though it doesn't make up for it, I think I'm quite skilled at visualizing structures like I did just now. In fact, when I first figured out a structure and reproduced it, my father looked surprised and said, What a useless ability. I guess my strong point isn't a useless, useful ability. According to my father, it's already a waste of effort to perceive the structure with my eyes. For a real magus, there's no need to understand every co corner of a structure like I just did. They say that the battle of a magus comes in reading the center, the core of things, instantaneously, and changing it faster than anything else. That's why reading the structure is a wasted effort, as even if you do understand the structure, all you can do is determine where magical energy could be more easily transmitted. So, all in all, it turns out that my strong point is just in fixing things like this. I don't have to open them up to look for damage. If I can quickly search for broken parts and have the skills to repair them, Most things can be fixed. Though that's only the case for simple things that can be fixed with amateur knowledge. I pack away the conducting wire that I used and go out into the hallway with the screwdriver and wrench in hand. Hey, sir. 
but... In the hallway is someone apart from Issei, a girl. I'm a bit surprised. The person talking to Issei is Tosaka Rin, from Class 2A. She's a lady who lives in the big mansion on top of the hill, a perfect honor student. Good looking, smart, athletic, and faultless. She's intelligent, well-mannered, and modest about her looks. People say she's the ideal woman. So it hardly needs to be said that the guys in my school treat her like an idol. Though in Tosaka's case, she's so perfect that she's considered unreachable. It's commonly believed that only teachers and guys like Issei can even talk to her. Well, to be honest, I'm a guy too. So I'm one of Tosaka Rin's admirers. Tosaka looks at us as if she's in a bad mood. It seems to be true that she and Issei don't get along. Wow. Issei is an amazing man, talking like that and ignoring Tosaka. There's only about 30 minutes left until home room. I'll have to hurry if I'm going to fix it. I start for the AV room with Issei. But it's impolite to just ignore her when, we, when we've met like this. I turn back to Tosaka, who's standing in a daze. I make an honest comment, then follow Issei. You're a strange one, Shiro. <laughs> Issei heads to his seat, relieved. It's exactly 8 o'clock. The first homeroom bell is rung, so Fujine should be here in about 5 minutes. <sighs> I'm a bit out, bit out of breath since we ran here from the AV room. Taking a deep breath, I head to my seat. Shiro has the worst friends ever. Mato Shinji, a friend of mine from middle school, is standing in front of my seat. As you can tell from his last name, he's Sakura's brother, who is one year older than her. Shinji。と、三つ釣りも頑張ってるんだな。はあ、何検討違いなこと言ってんの？弓道部が記録を伸ばしてるのは僕がいるからに決まってるじゃんか。エミアさ、とっくに部外者なんだから知ったような口を叩くと恥をか
雑用を残しているようなやつは首相失格だからなあんまり藤村先生を困らせるなよあの人怒ると本気で怖いぞ余計<笑>なお世話だともかくお前はもう部外者なんだから道場に近づくなよ Shinji returns to his seat in his usual manner. Hmm, he seemed even more irritated to,、uh, than usual today. Who's that get the yatsta? Jibun Kara Emia Oidas to it. Yokumo and Nakshina Kikiru. Nanda, I say, Itanoka. Nanda to Ananda. Kio Kikaste Kikimi or Tate, a Eugene Nimukate. Nanto, Retan, or Toda, or Maiwa. なんで気を利かすのさ俺一斉に心配されるようなことをしてないぞたわけ心配もするわエミアはカッとなりやすいからな真珠に殴りかかれば皆は喝采を送るが女どもからは非難の嵐だ友人をそんな微妙な立場に置くのはよろしくないそっかうん言われてみればそうだありがとう一斉そんなことにはならないだろうけど今の心配はありがたいうん分かればよろしいだが意外だったぞエミアは怒りやすいくせにマトウには寛大なんだなあああれはシンジの味だからな付き合いが長いと慣れてくる His style is to be a dick. うんそんなものかそんなものですほら納得したら席に戻れよそろそろ藤村先生がすっ飛んでくるぞ<笑>あの方は飛んでくるというより浮いてくるという感じだかな The homeroom bell rings A homeroom teacher would usually come five minutes early but our homeroom teacher isn't like that For class 2C homeroom starts one minute after the bell rings <laughs> Right when we hear that. And Fujine runs into the classroom. <laughs> Fujine falls over with a terrible sound. The classroom is filled with silence, in contrast to the clamor from a、uh, second ago. A sudden change of atmosphere. Just as you'd, as you'd expect from Fujine, her nickname of Human Jet Coaster isn't just for show. It's quite a nickname. But that really was a bad hit. Fujine is still on the ground, having hit her head on the platform. You can't see her expression with her head facing the ground, so it gives you a bad mental image. Boy, my no second hit, Sensei, I'll go to the end. Eh? Yeah, I'm. 近づいた途端パクって食べられたら怖いもんミミックじゃあるまいしさすがに藤村でもそこまでやらねえだろうあんたねそういうんなら自分で起こしてあげなさいようわ俺パスこういうの苦手私だって苦手よ大体いい何で女の子にやらせるわけ男子やりなさいよね男子 The front row is getting noisy As we're in the middle rows we can't tell what sort of state Fujine is in We can't tell, so we all stand up to look. Someone asks. If so, the problem would be how to get her to the nurse's office. Everyone here is a warrior who has been with Fujine for the past year. They probably want to get out of the, the habit of taking their teacher to the nurse's office. Fujimura, you A brave female student calls out to her. Fujine doesn't even twitch. A sense of worry runs through the room. まずいって今の転び方。こう頭から直角に教団に突っ込んだじゃないか。あれで無傷だったら藤村無敵っぽいって。はあ。いっそのことを野球部にスカウトするのはどうだろう。やめろよなそういう脅しは。大河が顧問
なんか反応ないよおいお前目の前なんだから起こしてやれよえっ、ー、やだよ俺もし死んでたら殺されかねねえいやでもだからってほっといたら後が怖いと思うしでも誰も近づきたくないと仕方ねえなこうなったらあれしかないかうんあれだね All our hearts become one. Well, not Shinji and I, because we're too scared. Even though everyone said it at the same time, it's only as loud as a whisper. The tiger part is especially quiet, but still, a twitch. The silent Fujine reacts. <laughs> よし、続けろ。ガコロートンの刑事。Everyone must be stressed from the impending exams. Even though they shouldn't, they repeat Fujine's nickname while waving their arms. 起きろ、タイガー。朝だぞ。先生、起きないとタイガーです。負けるな、タイガー。立ち上がれ、タイガー。よし、起きろ、先生。それでこそタイガーだぜ。タイガー、タイガー。Roar of lightning. She stands bravely as if the fall had done nothing at all. What are you doing? Don't go to the Fujine stands before everyone in her usual manner. It seems all memories from the moment、uh, she entered the classroom have fled her head. Hey, you're the only one who doesn't know. ラッキー朝からついてるな俺たちいやついてるっていうのかな Everyone returns to their, to their seats chatting ん今誰か先生のことバカにしなかったえしてないっすよ気のせいじゃないっすかそっかならよしじゃあ今朝のホームルームを始めるからみんなおとなしく聞くように Fujine starts homeroom slowly. She chats in between the announcements so we don't get through it very fast. So, you are a car, Mina Mogeko Jikoko, Mamoroni. Mongan, a rocket, the car, Bukat no potatimo, Nagai Stadameo. Eh, Rocket, the car, Sugu Janka. Taiga Sensei, so let the Undoke or Menjo Sarenaino Sarema Sem. So let the Gotoku. 先生のことは藤村先生って言わなくちゃダメなんだから次に名前で呼んだら怒るからねはーい以後注意します He sits down again not showing any signs of listening to her How stupid of him Fujine gets mad when she says she will It makes no difference that he's a student and she's a teacher He doesn't realize that she just gave him a final warning それじゃあ今日のホームルームはここまでみんな3次元目の英語で会おうねー Fujine leaves, waving her hand. She's the teacher responsible for class 2C, Fujimura Taiga. Her nickname is Tiger. You might doubt it, but it really is her nickname. People like calling her, so since she has a name like Taiga, even though she's a woman, but Fujine herself hates the nickname. According to her, it's unfeminine. But she's that kind of person, so I think it's her own fault that she has an unfeminine nickname. The teacher for the first period enters as Fujine exits. It's like this every morning, as Fujine continues homeroom until the very last minute. Okay, and I think that's a good place to end off the first episode. So I do hope you guys enjoyed. There's still a good bit of setup before we get into the、uh, meat of the game, but, you know, this is sort of a necessary evil. Well, it's, you know, entertaining on some level, but definitely not like the,、uh, you know, 
mid to later parts of the game for sure. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.